In this video, we'll have a look at how to create a simple snow shader in Unity using Shader Graph. First, we'll look at applying snow to a single object and then expand the shader to work well when applied to an entire environment. At the end, you should have something that looks like this. The assets that we're going to be using today are from the Dev Assets Mayan Temple Pack. There'll of course be a link to where you can get them in the description. But before things get too cold, this video is sponsored by XML Layout. XML Layout is a really cool Unity plugin that allows you to develop professional, fully functional user interfaces and UI elements using XML. It is awesome for very easily creating great UIs in a very smart and structured way. It supports all standard Unity UI elements, as well as allowing you to add custom elements, attributes, and animations. Also, it supports most platforms and is in general very well documented with a lot of examples, which makes it very easy to get started with. And of course, XML in general is just very fun and easy to work with. So before making the UI for your next game, I definitely recommend you check out XML Layout. You can of course do so by clicking the link in the description. All right, put on your beanies and gloves and let's make some snow. So first of all, you want to make sure that you're using Unity 2019.1.2 or later, and that your project is set up to use the lightweight render pipeline. However, this effect should also work for HDRP. So as you can see, I have a very simple scene here with a skull pile object that is currently just using a default lid shader. Let's go ahead and change that by creating our own. So let's go to the project, hit create. Let's go shader. Let's go to PBR graph and let's create a snow shader. Let's double click on the shader to open it up in shader graph. Now the first thing that we want to add to our shader is a texture. Because as most objects, our skulls is of course using a base texture. So let's go to our blackboard here. Let's add a new texture 2D and let's just call it our base map. Let's take this and drag it in. And in order to hook this up to the albedo channel of our PBR master node, we first need to connect it to a sample texture node, which is going to convert it from a texture type to RGBA, which we can then plug into our albedo. As you can see, not much happens in our preview. That's because we still need to choose a texture. In fact, let's go ahead and change from this default sphere here to a custom mesh. And I'm just gonna search for our skull pile here. This way we can see what everything looks like from within shader graph. Pretty cool. So now I'm gonna go over here and choose a texture. And our skull pile is part of a larger texture atlas, but it is there even though it looks a bit confusing. So I'm going to select that one. And as you can see, our skulls now look much nicer. I'm also just going to set the smoothness to zero. And that's pretty much it for our base setup. I of course encourage you to add properties for metallic, smoothness, normal maps and so on to fit your needs. But for now, this should be fine. So to create our snow effect, we first need to understand what a normal vector is. A normal vector is a vector that is perpendicular to the tangent plane of the surface at a certain point. Now this might sound really scary, but it basically just means that it's a vector that points away from the surface. So say we have a sphere where we only want to apply snow to the top. Well, this sphere has a bunch of normal vectors that all point away from the model that we can use. To do this, we first define a snow direction. This is a vector that points in the direction we want our snow to come from. In this case, it's just pointing straight up. We can then use the dot product between the direction and the normal vector to figure out how much snow we should place on different parts of the object. Take for example the normal vector at the top of the model. This is parallel with the direction vector, and because the dot product of two parallel vectors is 1, we know that we should place lots of snow here. In the case of the normal vector to the right, however, this is perpendicular to the direction vector. And because the dot product of two perpendicular vectors is zero, we know that we shouldn't place any snow here. In fact, all the normal vectors in between these two are going to give us values between zero and one based on how close they are to the direction vector, which is exactly what we need. Now it's time to create some snow. So let's go ahead and create a normal vector node. Again, this is going to get the normal vectors which we can then dot together. So we'll add it into a dot product node with the direction of our snow. In my case, I just want it to fall from the top as snow normally does. So I'm going to go ahead and create a vector three over here in our blackboard. I'm going to call it snow direction. And I'm just going to default the Y here to one. I'm going to drag it in and plug that into our dot product node. We then want to make sure that we are clamping our dot product so that it doesn't go below zero or above one. So let's drag that into a clamp node. 
here to go between 0 and 1. And now this should make sure that our snow will only fall from the top. However, we of course still need to create our snow. So let's just move this down. And for a nice and simple snow effect, let's use the simple noise node. As you can see, this creates a bunch of tiny grains, which I think definitely looks like snow. I'm just going to set this to 100 for now on this scale. And I'm also going to plug it into a remap node. And this is just going to allow me to change this from going from 0 to 1 to go from something like 0.5 to 1. Just so that our snow doesn't get as dark as the default simple noise. I think this looks quite a bit like snow. And from here we can simply multiply it together with the result of our dot product calculation here. And this should give us our snow layer, which we can simply add on top of our default texture. So if we just go ahead and move all this stuff over and do the same thing here, we can simply drag down here into an add node and take the output of our snow and plug that in as well. And then take the result of that into the albedo channel. And voila, right away you can see that we now have snow on our skull pile. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the scale quite a bit here. And as you can see, we can now see the grains of the noise as well. And if we try and save this asset, and if we go back into Unity, we can find the material for our skull pile here. As you can see, it's just a simple lit shader with a base map input. And that's pretty much it. So let's just go ahead and change the shader here to Shader Graphs Snow. And that might be a bit too much on the snow. So let's go into our snow shader and let's add an opacity slider that will allow us to control the transparency of our snow. So doing that is super simple. We just want to take the output of our dot product calculation and multiply it. So we'll drag in here and create a multiply node together with some kind of value. So here we can control the intensity. If I output this here, you can see that we can now control the intensity of our snow. And let's just create a value for this. So let's create a vector one. Let's call it snow opacity. And let's actually make this a slider that goes between zero and one. And let's just default it to something like 0.5. Now let's take this and hook it up to our multiply node. And that's pretty much all we needed to do. I'm just gonna organize the nodes a bit here. And now if we save this asset, jump back into Unity and select our skull pile, we can now adjust the opacity of our snow, which I think looks really cool. In fact, we can also adjust the snow direction in any way that we'd like if we want it to come from the side here. I think that definitely gives a pretty cool look. In fact, we can even go ahead and increase these direction values above one to give another look. You can see that it gives us more snow and it also hardens up the edge from the snow. So you can definitely adjust that to your liking and that's pretty much how you can get snow working really, really simply on a per object basis. However, one thing that is really cool is that we can modify this shader to really easily be applicable on an entire environment. Of course, if you have a bunch of single objects like this one, you could go ahead and change the shader for each and every one of them. However, for something like the Mayan Temple Pack, we have a huge amount of objects in here. Now, in this case, they only use a few materials because a lot of them are packed into the same texture atlas and so they can share the same material. However, you could have hundreds, if not thousands of materials here. So it would be really annoying to go in and having to adjust a bunch of settings for each one, having to go into the shader here and create a parameter for the scale of the symbol noise, because that's going to depend on the UV maps of your object and so on. So let's go ahead and add a bit onto this shader in order for the snow to be relative to our world position instead of the UVs of our object. So to do this, we of course want to start with a position node. In fact, we want to start with our vertices position in world space. We can then take this position and split it up into its different coordinates. So we have the X, the Y and the Z. And we just want to focus on the X and the Z here. Because if we have a look in Unity, we want our snow to be falling from the top. So if we want to overlay a huge snow texture that is shared by all of the objects, we want to do it from a top-down view. In other words, we want to create a UV plane that uses our X and our Z and completely ignore our Y. So let's go ahead and take our X here and let's plug it into a vector 2. 
And we'll also take our z and plug that into the other part of our vector too. And this is now our UVs. So from here we can go into our symbol noise. And by now we probably want to reduce the scale of this a bit because that scale is pretty crazy. Let's do something like 500. And as you can see, it doesn't change much in our preview, but our snow is now relative to our world position instead of the UVs of our object. And if we save this and go into Unity and select some of the materials that are making up our environment here, I'm gonna select all of the ones that are non-transparent. We'll talk about transparency in a bit. Then for the shader, let's change this to Shader Graphs Snow. And as you can see, right away, we have a snowy level. There are definitely things that we can do to make this look better, but we're pretty much halfway there. We have snow on all of the surfaces pointing up. In fact, we have that on all of the tiny surfaces and something like the wall here as well. And we have this cool grain overlay that is shared by all of the objects. So I think overall that is looking pretty great already. You can adjust stuff like the opacity or the snow direction, but I'm actually pretty happy with it as is. However, one thing that is a bit unrealistic with the way that our snow is set up right now is the fact that everything is covered equally in the snow. And that doesn't really happen. Snow gets thrown around by wind. And just as a rule of thumb, whenever you're working with something organic that nature has created, the eye expects to see some variance. So let's go ahead and make sure that our snow isn't distributed completely equally. In fact, we can do this really easily by going into our snow shader. And instead of just overlaying a simple noise, let's go ahead and create another noise function here. We'll use a gradient noise. And this one we want to scale down quite a lot. I'm going to scale it down to something like 0.5. I'm going to use the same UVs for this because we want it to be overlaid in the same way. And I'm then going to take the output of this and multiply it together with the result of our snow. So instead of just going directly down to a multiply node here, let's go ahead and move this thing out a bit. Let's plug this into a multiply node and multiply that together with the result of our symbol noise. And then take the result of that into our multiply node down here. And what this should do, this won't really be visible in the preview, but what this should do, if we save this asset and go into Unity, is based on this gradient noise, create areas that are more snowy than others. And I think right away that gives a much more realistic look. I think this effect is a bit too exaggerated at the moment, and you can definitely try and play around with the scale of the gradient noise to make this more refined. But if we just go ahead and plug this right through a remap node, just in order to control how much of an impact this effect has. So let's change it from going from zero to one to go to something like 0.3 to one and plug that into our multiply and maybe change the scale to something like 0.3. If we then save that asset and go back into Unity, I think we have a really nice looking organic snow effect. Super, super cool. One thing that I also want to do is make sure that if we go ahead and change our snow direction here, say we make it come kind of from the side, that completely vertical faces aren't affected. We still want to be able to kind of control the direction of our snow, but because of the way that we've set up our snow, this doesn't look very good. In fact, let's create it so that the more angle a surface has, the less it's affected by snow. That should give a fairly realistic look. So to do this, let's just head back into Shader Graph. And now with our new knowledge of the dot product, you can in fact just go from the normal vector into a dot product. And we want to dot this with a vector going straight up. So 0, 1, 0. And we can just use that to multiply together with our snow. So let's just go ahead and multiply that. I'm just going to collapse these with the output of our snow and take the result of that and multiply it with our other dot product here. And that should now result, if we save this asset, in an effect where the more of an angle the surface has, the less it's affected by snow. And as you can see, the vertical faces here are completely unaffected. Really, really cool. Now I'm just gonna go in here and set the snow direction back. In this case, I just want it to come from the top, but now this should be safe and look pretty good no matter what you want to do with the snow direction. And that's pretty much it for this effect. Here's the graph in its entirety. Again, I definitely encourage you to add stuff for normal maps, metallicness, smoothness, and all that stuff. And of course, one thing that this shader currently doesn't support is transparent surfaces. 
But if you want to create a variant on the shader that supports that, all we need to do is simply duplicate it, call this one snow transparent, double click it. And in our PBR master node, we want to change the surface type to transparent. And we can then simply take the alpha of our sample texture node and plug that into the alpha of our PBR master. If we save that, go into Unity and select this material here. This is for the trees and all the different kinds of foliage that are using transparent surfaces. We then change this over to our shader graph snow transparent. For the base map here, I'm going to change to the correct one. And as you can see, we now have snow on the leaves of the tree here and transparency is working just fine. So it's actually that easy, really cool. Of course, I also encourage you to change around some settings for your environment in order to make it look more snow-like. In my case here, I'm gonna go to the main camera and make the background brighter. That definitely seems more like a snow landscape. I'm also going to go to lighting and just bump up the ambient intensity. And there are of course a million different tricks like this that you can do to make your environment feel more like a winter scene. But I think for just a single shader, this is a really cool and easy to use effect. And I really like the fact that we now just have a slider for no snow and lots of snow. Yay! That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Also, don't forget to check out XML layout before creating your next UI. Simply get started by clicking the link in the description. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Also, special thank- Hey, do you want to do it? Yeah, you should do it. All right. Thanks to all of the Patreon supporters who donated in April. And a special thanks to Infinity PBR, Cyborg Mami, Dennis Sullivan, Chris, Shane Cleveland, Fai Faisal, 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 Faisal Marify, Lincoln Chang, Leo Lisset, Runen, Daniel Dusanik, Konstantinas Karentas, Naoki Iwasaki, Gregory Pierce, Rob Fern, Dr. Poon Moon, Erasmus, Kirill Sviderski, Tim Avhaltabak, and Tyson Konovsky. You guys, no, you know what, I, I can't, I'm not authorized for that. You have to do that. You guys rock. <laughs>